connected that you are joining us, whether you're in the house with us or whether you're watching online. Thank you for joining us this morning. I just ask that you rise to your feet. If you're in your house, just prepare yourself. Make time. We are about ready to enter into the presence of God. We're going to enter in with praise, and then we're going to go into worship. Father, I just pray right now that every person, every household, you'd begin to fill the room, God. We just ask you to come and fill the room. Lord, we just bind any distractions, anything trying to steal our attention, God. We just turn our focus on you. We just behold the Lamb that takes away the sins. We behold the Lamb of God right now in this moment. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I believe this morning that God is wanting to let the rivers, the rivers of wa the water of life that flows from the kingdom, that flows from the throne of God. He is going to let that flow through our sanctuary right now, flow through your house right now. The water that is peace, the water that is joy, the waters of prosperity. Let the waters flow through you this morning. Come, God, come.
let's celebrate him this morning. Give him a hand clap of praise. We've been made new. We thank you, Jesus. Been made new. All your promises are yes and amen. You made us recipients of the promise. We thank you, Father. All of your promises are a realization in our lives. you 
this morning. Let's lift our hands all over this house this morning. Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, we lift the name of Jesus in this place. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. You are our champion this morning. But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. No matter what I feel, let faith rise. 
let faith rise for my champions not dead he is alive oh and he already knows my every need and surely he will come and rescue me God of miracles come we need your supernatural love to break through nothing's impossible you're the God of miracles God of miracles God of
before we sing that song again, and I want us to start from that place where this world is shaken. This is a message for the church. I want to welcome those who are joining us online. This is something only the church can do because we believe in the God of miracles. And this nation, we need the supernatural love of God to break through in this nation. If there's ever an appropriate time for us to come together as one people, as one body, it is right now. And I believe the Father is saying that unity comes because of the body of Christ. So as we sing this song again, I want us to think about this nation. And I want us as the church to pray and declare, God, you're the God of miracles. Only you can unite. Only you can heal. I got anybody that believes that with me? Come on. Is there anyone online and here corporately that believes that God is the only one who can do the supernatural work of breaking through? So let's sing that one more time, God of miracles. And let's sing and let's pray and let's believe the supernatural love of God to be breaking through into every heart and unifying us as one people under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is the God of miracles. This world is shaken, but we cannot be shaken. Come on. Come on. Yes. the prayer of faith we thank you that we are courageous because we have confidence in our creator and father I pray for these United States of America we pray heavenly father that you will do the supernatural work that only could come from you we join together, Father, with those who are here and those who are joining us online, our online community of believers. We come together in unity and we declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We decree and we declare over this nation that, God, you will show yourself strong on the behalf of the body of Christ. God, Abraham prayed, Lord, if there's 50 righteous, spare the nation. And God, I believe that there are many righteous people in this nation who are crying out with compassion, crying out with conviction. He said, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us and move mightily with miracles in our midst. Heal those who are sick. Set the captives free transform our lives and do what only you can do father if there's ever a moment in the history of this nation that we need you it is right now we need jehovah rapha the god who heals we need 
the shepherd of our soul. And we come with courage and with confidence that as we pray, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let us exalt him as we continue to worship and magnify his name. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you and you alone. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee.
Just for him this morning. in this place. More significant than that, the Spirit of the Lord is in us. So there's freedom this morning. There is freedom this morning. There is freedom this morning. we continue to worship the Lord you may be seated as we continue to worship the Lord there is freedom this morning although we've stopped singing worship has not stopped we worship you Jesus from where you are seated. If there's a praise inside of you, right where you're seated, for those who are watching online, this is our time to respond for the last 42 minutes. We have been singing unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want to just take a minute before Pastor Teresa comes and we continue in our service. But I just want us, I want to encourage you, just right where you are, right where you are, respond, respond to what the Lord has been doing in your life. That's it. Come on, we're responding by faith. Far from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are the of it all.
Father, we thank you that we respond by faith. And we thank you that you're doing a work in our lives. And we respond to that work in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Pastor Teresa, will you come before our children and our teens go for their time of ministry? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is so worthy this morning. He's a good God. He's a good God. Don't pay any attention to the men beyond. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Uh, it's written in Malachi this week. And uh, God said, you know, that the people had, uh, we're bringing the blind sheep and the lame. And it's like, you know, the leftovers to God. And God said that, he, that they were robbing him because they weren't bringing his best. So I was thinking about when we bring our best to God and how that comes about. You know, so, so you say, okay, I'm not giving like I should, but I'll uh, read my Bible more. I'll do this. I'll do that. And before you know it, you have come up with a list of weighty things. And it's a burden. And then it's, I can't. Why bother? And you back up. So what makes a difference between giving God our best and the list of things that we have to do or we think we have to do to give God our best? What's the difference? I think that the difference is knowing Him. I think the difference is knowing his love. That's the difference between the law and life and life. When we sang that song, all the promises of God are yes and amen. He didn't have to promise us. My God will supply all my needs. He promised it not for you to take it and make it a law into your life, for you to say, look at the heart of God. Look at the heart of God. He wants to supply my needs. He wants to uh, heal our diseases. He wants to. He put it in his word because he was letting us know his heart for us. So when you think like, okay, maybe you've uh, gotten off track and maybe you're not doing the things that... Um, you feel like you should do. Instead of making a list of things to do, check your heart relationship with God. And not in a not in a condemning way, just say, God, I need to know you more. I need to know your heart for me. I need to know your love for me. Help me when I read the word to see your love, not the law. Help me to see your love. Then when you take a hold of things in the word, the promises, you're, you're taking it as a connection of relationship and not of something on the to-do list or something that you're failing at, you know? He came to fulfill the law. Love fulfills the law. It happens automatically because of love. Because of love. Amen? Amen. So if, if you find like with tithing, if it's, uh, if you have an issue or you just think, you know, I, I can't, it's weighty, whatever, just ask the Lord. 
Help me to learn more about your love for me in you as a provider. Help me to learn that, God. Open my eyes to see. Give me revelation knowledge of your love for me. That's where all giving stems from anyway. That's where his giving stemmed from, for God so loved the world. It's from love. Amen. So you can give online or by text. Um, you can write a check. Uh, my TGP, just put it in the basket in the back or cash. There's envelopes back there as well. And we'll pray over our, our offering, our seed. Father, we just, we thank you, Lord. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory, God. Help us, Lord, expand our understanding of your love for us, God, of your goodness. When we read the word, help us to see your love letter to us. Open our hearts, Lord, break down the barriers. Lord, any barriers that keep us from really knowing you, Father, I just pray you break those down, Father, because everything you have for us is good. Jesus' name, amen.
этот ногой.
praise your name Jesus father we thank you for that declaration that you've given us the authority and we honor and we praise you we give you all the praise all the glory in Jesus name amen and amen praise the name of the Lord come on hallelujah clap your hands for the king of kings and the Lord of lords amen Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, praise team. Thank you. Amen. Well, it's 11.02, according to my, I think an iPhone 10, not sure. Amen. But uh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a really good time diving into the Word this morning. And I'm super excited. Every time I get to share the Word of God, I'm excited and I'm thrilled and I'm also nervous because it is my desire. I believe it's the desire of every pastor is to communicate the heart of God to his people. You don't want to hear my opinions as great as they are. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. You want to hear God's voice. And you want to hear God's word. Because trust me, my opinions are what they are. But God's word is everlasting. It's, it's transformational. And so uh, we want to dive into the word this morning. Uh, turn in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 26. Let's go to... The wisdom writing of Solomon, who was uh, the son of David. Solomon is an interesting character uh, in the Bible, um, the wisest man who ever lived. And um, he has some things to sh say to us uh, in regards to this theme that we're on when it comes to, uh, to confidence. So we're going to begin there in Proverbs 3, verse 26. Praise the name of the Lord. There's just one verse, one verse, and it's going to start us off, and then we're going to dive into the life of Moses. We're going to look into the life of Moses. Every single one of us has a Moses in them, and we're going to see how Moses is, is critical, is vital uh, to our growth when it comes especially to this concept and this teaching of confidence. So in Proverbs 3.26, it says from the English Standard Version, For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Amen. Isn't that an amazing word right there? For the Lord will be your confidence. Father, again, we thank you for the reading of your word. I pray that you will continue to lead me and that I will speak your words to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So last week we looked at um, what I put on the board here was the God side confidence. And I, I drew a picture. I want you to get a, a big view or the big picture of where we're going, I believe, prophetically in this message. And so what I want to do today is, is, is do a couple of things. And, and I want to get into the life of Moses because you're going to find that Moses um, hangs around here, which is the source of confidence. And it's important that you write this down or get this in your mind, that um, when I speak of the source to start uh, strong confidence or self-confidence and would stay with confidence in the middle, the order is vital. So the order is, is very significant. Uh, if you look in the Bible, again, in Genesis chapter 1, we see that God is the God of order. Someone say that God's the God of order. That's why he orders your life. And because he orders your life, there has to be harmony. There has to be an alignment. And so sometimes the things that we're facing is God literally ordering our lives and putting things in alignment so that we can actually get the flow. Someone say the flow. If, if you're watching online, there's a flow of the spirit. There's a flow about you. There's something that's unique about you. And we're not seeing the full you because you're stopping the flow. And so we want the fully balanced. We are biblically balanced. And so because we have the confidence and because we believe it's God's will for our lives, what do we do? We go to the interview and we're saying, God, you're the source of my confidence because you're the provider. You're the provider. So, so I'm here believing that you're going to provide the things that I need. And, and, and so we have to be confident when, when, when we do that. And so what happens now is this, that the order is vital because when we have the order, it is not about this. It's about this way. So in other words, when I see you, you're telling me based on what your countenance, you're telling me I'm staying with confidence. 
And so what people see is just you. But in the spirit realm, come on, what the demonic force is seeing is they're seeing that you have the source of confidence. You start with confidence. You have strong confidence. And you have self-confidence. That's what's being seen in the unseen realm. So when I see you and you're flowing in your gifts and talent, I'm telling you, stay with confidence. That's it. Stay there. Stay there. Stay in that flow. Let nobody talk you out of it because it's vital because you are a gift to somebody. For the last four years, I've been preaching that, and I want you to get that. TGP is not just a gathering place. It's the gifted people because we walk with a certain flow. We do life together. Why? Because that's how the giftings are manifested. Why? Because we do life together. And so the best picture that I can see of that was, was I was going through the, the, the wedding pictures from, from Danny and Blaine's wedding. And, there, and there's a picture where Blaine is in the front and he has his jacket on. And he has the two guys on one side, two on the other side. And when I looked at it, God was like, that's the picture I want you to have in your mind. It is where you see that here's Blaine out in front. And you see these two other people. And they all look good, by the way. They all look the same, right? And they all have their strengths, and the person that's leading out front is Blaine. And so what the picture that God was showing me says, Ron, when you, when, you, when you stand up in confidence, what you have behind you, beside you, is this balanced approach to the will of God for your life. Write that down. The will of God is balanced and is also biblical. That's so you're going to know, God, what is it that you want me to do next? You will look at it and it will be balanced Balance from the perspective of integrity. It won't rob you of who you are for it to be from God. God doesn't rob who you are to get his things accomplished. He, that he wants you to maintain your integrity, be who you are in your unique, innovative way. And he's saying now that when you look at confidence, that, that having confidence is the ability now for you to influence so the reason why I want to be a person of confidence, the reason why I want to have God-sized confidence is because I want to have influence because the people that God brings around me, I want them to see the confidence that comes from knowing who? God. From God. Can you imagine with me? Can you imagine with me that God's will for your life is so massive that God knows he has to give you massive confidence to be able to walk in it? Here's why. Write this down. God's word never returns void. His word never returns void. So if he speaks a prophetic word over your life, he brings the balance to it. He says there's integrity in my word, so therefore there's integrity in your actions. Because there's integrity in God's word, there's integrity in your actions. Because here's the deal. Because when you step out by faith, God's word is on the line. And so he doesn't want you to step out in his name and get criticized for believing what he told you to do. So it says, the integrity of my word is what you walk on. Peter was in the boat, and when he says, Lord, it is you, bid me to come. And so it required a confidence for Peter to step out of the boat and come to the Lord. And what was it? Jesus responded, it is I, come. And so Peter, based on that word, stepped out of the boat, and he was walking on the word with confidence. But it didn't stop until he took his eyes off of the source of confidence. And he put it on the wind and the wave. Come on. And it was at, only at that moment, the moment his eyes were on Jesus, he was walking on the word. Not walking on water. He was walking on the word. So if people say to you, okay, do it again. Walk on the water. He says, no, I walk on the word. And he didn't give me that word to walk on this water. Because there's integrity to what I say. That's why when you get a prophetic word, it is vital. Because we build our lives off prophetic words. Come on. That if God is revealing his will through people, and God may want to use you. No, God is going to use you to bring a prophetic word to people. Come on. And that word is going to rest upon this. Stay with confidence. That's the word. And so we're going to break it down and take a look at this because I think it is vital. So, so this now, let me break it down, is in three parts. So you have the five things of a god side confidence, but it's also in three parts. Write this down. This first section of the source and start with confidence deals with life. L-I-F-E. Deals with life. Over here, strong confidence and self-confidence deals with how you lead your life. 
You can't have one without the other. And so because he gives you life, he now says, lead your life. And so now you have a balanced approach to life and how you lead. And lead is everything. How you lead your life, how you lead your family's life, how you lead everything. You are not just to manage. You are to lead. It's a combination of balance. So you manage your checkbook, but you lead your life. And how you lead your life can affect your management of your checkbook. You see what I'm saying? You, 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 you lead your time called season, come on, but you manage your time over here called Kairos. And so you recognize now that it's vital. And in the middle, what people see right in the middle is how you live. So you have life, source, and start with confidence. So when I'm talking to somebody who has life, guess what I'm seeing? I want to see their life. So whenever you're in a relationship with anyone, with anyone, and you're talking to them, what you want to look for is how their life is governed. Because based on how their life is governed is where they're going to be what? Leading you. And so what we have to look for then is how are you living? Genesis chapter number 2. And God said, let us make man in our likeness and our image. Genesis chapter 1. And in chapter 2, God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed into them what? The breath of life. And man became what? A living being or a living soul. And so he says, now, now go and lead your life, Adam and Eve, in all that I've given you. So in other words, they need to have confidence. Confidence. And so we define confidence in our last session as this. That confidence, when you break it down, really is into this thing called assurance. Confidence leads its way into security. Confidence makes its way, when you look at it, into safety. Confidence makes its way into assurance, has courage, has hope, and has trust. And here is the crown jewel of everything. Here it is. You are a speaking being. God is a God who speaks. In the beginning, God said this. That's why he's giving you authority. When I speak to mountains, you've got to use your mouth. You've got to use your mouth. You, got, you have to speak. And so as a result of that, then, people will know your confidence based on how you speak. Not how you speak, but what you are speaking. And the reason why I break it down is because of this. Because to have confidence in the midst of situations, you have to know that when I speak, things happen. That when I speak, mountains move. That when I speak, things have to get out of the way. In other words, in the Bible, we read that Peter and John was brought before the council, the religious council. And they were speaking. And here's what they said. Oh, my goodness. These men speak with boldness. In other words, they speak with confidence. And if I hear, when I hear them speak, I have to go back to the source, which is they must have been with Jesus. And so there are times when we can't be silent, that we must speak with confidence. There has to be those moments that when we do that. And so when we break this down, right, the best person that I believe anyways, that we can look at this and we can uh, refer to is Moses, is Moses. So go with me to Hebrews chapter 11 now, verse 23 to verse 28. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 to verse 28. There are four points I'm going to make, and then we're going to launch out uh, with this. Okay, so four major, major points that I want you to, to dive into this week. I want to encourage you uh, to read uh, the story of Moses, and I want you to fill in some of the blanks or, or to add some meat to the bone that I'm giving you of this message. So in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 to verse 28, the writer of Hebrew, their goal is this. Don't throw away your confidence. That's the goal. You're facing persecution. Don't throw away your confidence. As the writer of Hebrew moves through these 11 chapters, he now comes to this place where he says, I've got to bring faith into the equation. Write that down. Faith is required. Well, faith is required that you have to live by faith. He says, my righteous ones live by faith. Faith. So you have to deal with this issue of faith. And so he writes down, he says, let me go back to the source of confidence. Let me give you some Old Testament heroes 
that have walked this thing out called confidence by faith. And so he goes to Moses, and in verse 23, he says this. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by who? By his parents. That's why on Wednesdays we're teaching partnering with parents to raise, or excuse me, to develop what? Confident children. So here we see now Moses and the birth of Moses in a time that was a major crisis. Kids weren't surviving in the time of Moses. The edict was if you gave birth to a male son, you had to kill him. And so here is the parent now, and it says he was hidden for three months. Why? Because there was the moment in the belly there was a death warrant for this child. And so right from the beginning, we see that by faith, Moses, when he was born, was it by what? His parents. So his parents now recognize that there was something about this child that we need to make sure that his confidence remains. Because, why? They saw that the child was beautiful. Oh, my goodness. The child was beautiful. They recognized there was something about this child. They saw the destiny of this child and was willing to do whatever was required to make sure that this child understood that they are children of destiny. And they were not, here it is, they were not afraid of the king's edict. So they were saying, listen, we have confidence. In the midst of all that surrounding us, there's a confidence that we have. And so we have a generation of young people that needs to know, come on, that they can still have confidence in the midst of, I don't know how we're going to do school this year. School interrupted last year, and it's going to be interrupted again this year. This is the month of August when things are happening. And kids, trust me, have questions. They do. They do. They have questions. And so even with my daughter, she got in the vehicle and had this, this attitude. I'm like, something's wrong. No, it's not. No, it's something's wrong. I'm going to keep asking you, something's wrong. Something happened. And I want to figure what that is without getting on your nerves. But I'm going to have to ask you, what is it? Come on, Dad. No, I want to ask you, what is it? Because I see your destiny. Something's troubling you right now. Maybe you don't trust me yet. Okay. But at least I'm going to ask. Because here we see Moses' parents recognize that they have a responsibility to make sure this child has some confidence. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. Watch this now, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called. That's critical. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking for the reward. He was intentional. He was intentional. When you're confident, you're intentional. When you're confident, you make investments. Write that down for those watching online. When you are confident, you are intentional about your what? Life and how I lead my life. Intentionality is critical. Making disciples, the reason why it's so hard is because it requires us to be intentional. It requires for us to be what? In the moment. For us to be always asking, God, what are you saying to me right now? What are you saying in this very hour? Listen, to be intentional doesn't mean you have to interrupt your life. To be intentional means you have intimacy with the one who gives life. And so because you're intimate with the one who gives life, you recognize that as you continue throughout your day, that guess what? That God is leading your steps. The steps of a righteous person, they're ordered by the Lord. And so he goes on and he says, that he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king. Are you seeing a pattern here? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. The mom wasn't afraid. Moses wasn't afraid. And he continues on and says, I'm not afraid. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. Okay, what is interesting is that this is the writer of Hebrew, how he saw Moses' life. But that's not how Moses saw his life. <laughs> Come on, let's be real. This is the writer of Hebrew now. And listen, you may look at your own life and think, oh my gosh, my life is horrible. My life is this. But no, there are people who are looking at your life who see God at work in your life. And they're saying, I know it looks like it is not going right, but I see a faith inside of you. Come on. And I'm going to encourage you with a prophetic word to stay with confidence. 
to stay with confidence because how you live your life helps me to lead my life. And so that's how the writer of Hebrew saw his life. But in Acts chapter 7, and this is some interesting reading. You, you can read this on your own in Acts chapter 7, verse 20 to verse 37. Stephen, the first martyr, here's how he saw Moses' life. He, he came closer to seeing how Moses saw his own life. But here was Stephen now, and Stephen was preaching this message, and he was by design wanting to offend. <laughs> Stephen was saying, I'm going to offend you in this message. Because your actions need to be held accountable. And so Stephen is saying, I know in his life was on the line. Recognize there's a confidence inside of me. How do we know that? Because when they stoned him, Stephen looked up and says, I see Jesus. Oh, good God of mine. And when we see Jesus in every situation, we will get boldness and confidence because to live is Christ, but to die is gain, saith God. And when we live from that perspective, we won't just look to offend because we want to condemn. We will look to offend to get you into your alignment. To flow with the giftings that you have inside of you. Don't go to the grave and rob this nation. Don't go to the grave and rob your neighbor. Don't go to this grave and rob your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Don't go to the grave and rob that employer or employee. Don't go to the grave. Thus saith the Lord. Don't you go to the grave until you're empty. Because what I have for you in heaven, you can't bring earthly stuff to there anyway. That's a prophetic word from God right there. Stop trying to accumulate things of the world. Die empty. Say, I gave everything, God. I had confidence and I gave everything. I spoke the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. And our first martyr gives us the example. And he referred to Moses. He says, let me tell you your history about the source of your confidence. Remember Moses? They're like, yeah. Remember how you exalted Moses? Yeah. Well, Moses talked about this Christ that I'm going to die for. What? Yes, Moses. And I'm going to give you a biology. Excuse me. I'm going to give you the background of Moses, his biology. I'm going to tell you everything about Moses. And so Moses is very important. And here's why. Because Moses then, Moses then tells us how he saw it in the now. You see, these people are writing at the end. But Moses wrote it from where he is now. And where we are is where we are right now. So preacher, speak to me where I am right now. And so the first thing is this. Confidence, my first point, has to be in the character of God. Your confidence must be in the character of God. Because it's through your character we determine which God are you relying on. It is through your character. It's through how you speak. It's through how you conduct yourself. And guess what? God knows we need help, so he gives the Holy Spirit. Come on. So we don't become what? Self-righteous. That we can say, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I've got to take a praise break. And I apologize if this type of preaching is not up to par. But I've got to take a praise break. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus... When I think of the goodness of Jesus and, and what he's done for me, my, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. The character of God is vital. The character of God is vital. You see, in this ministry, God has called many saints from this ministry home who have fought a good fight, who have kept the faith, who, who, who have fought the fight, who have kept the faith. These are people that we can look at their character and we can see God inside of them. We see God inside of them. The, the Rollins who went to be with the Lord. The Arlene's who went to be with the Lord. The Wendy's who went to be with the, with the Lord. These people who have gone home to be with the Lord. So critical. These individuals because we see in them the, 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 the character of God, the character of God. 
And that's the first thing that we have to look at is, 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 is the character. And, and we have to look and we have to observe your life. And so we see with Moses now, we see the character of God being expressed in the life of Moses. That Moses is saying, I'm confused. I don't know who I am. I look over my life and I don't know who I am. I've got, I've got a struggle on the inside of me. And the struggle is with my identity. It's that struggle. And so the only thing that can solve the, 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 the identity issue is the character of God. Is that is my identity lining up with the character of God? Is my life and the way I live and the way I lead, is it lining up with the character of God? And that's why we must know God. That's why we're not trying to offend people by exalting Jesus Christ. We're saying this is the character that you want to have. We speak of the Ten Commandments. Come on, the Ten Commandments reveals the character of God. Every single one of them has you in mind. It's not about God. Listen, God doesn't need our affirmation. Come on, we need God's affirmation. And so if we think that God needs our affirmation, we won't see worship as it truly can be. And God can flow through you. Can you just imagine with me for one second that as you're in worship, God will download to you something that somebody needs. And you will go and speak to them. And they will say, how did you know that? How did you know I was struggling with that? Or I needed that word. Or I needed encouragement. You can let them know because of the character of God. That God is thinking about you. And so here it is that, that we look at Moses and from these three different angles and what we must see to be consistent. Write this down. See, character is what brings consistency. It is character. It brings consistency to our lives. And so we have to get off this concept of perfection, which means that we don't make mistakes. What we look at is completion in the work of God. So when we say we don't make mistakes, we're not perfect, excuse me, we don't want people to assume that we think we're self-righteous, that now that God has saved us, that we no longer struggle. That's not what we're saying. What we are saying, though, is this, that the struggle that we have is a struggle with our identity because the enemy wants to revert us back to this life, and we can't go there. Why? Because there was no joy. There was no peace. There was no harmony. There was nothing there. Choose who you want to serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's the message. And so what we want to do is we don't want to get to a place where we sin. And so the reason why I'm going to get ahead of myself is we want to stay with confidence is because God put you on this earth. Come on, if you woke up this morning, you're on this earth for one purpose, to glorify God. But your other purpose is to be in the character of God so you can speak to me in case I sin. That you're watching the actions of my life. You're holding me accountable. Why? Because you know that I'm going to struggle because we all struggle. But I have to have confidence that you're going to come to me with a prophetic word. Why? Because you've been intimate with the Lord and you have overcome certain things I'm struggling with. So I need you now to have confidence to come to me in community and say, listen, in community, we prevent one another from sinning. Ooh, see, 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 that's doing life together. And what we have done is we've created country clubs to make you comfortable. And so you come in and you're comfortable in your sin. And so I can't move with the flow that I want to. And I'm asking God to bless me. I'm asking God to open doors. But there's an area in my life that I can't see, but you can see it. That's why James says, confess your sins one to another. Not to expose, come on, and condemn me, but to prevent me from sinning so I don't stop the flow of God in my life. Guess what? I need you. Even as the pastor, I need you even more. Because the pressures that are there, is this helping anybody? And so the enemy watches now. The enemy can't take you out of church. It's one of the biggest lies. People are abandoning the church. That doesn't exist. That's a worldly, it doesn't exist. Jesus says, I'm building the church. What people are leaving is not the church. They're leaving community. And it's community where people have been hurt by the church. No, it's community. That particular community was toxic. 
because there's people who still love Jesus. Come on, somebody. But they don't want community. And it's dangerous to be alone because the enemy says, now I got you because you're alone. Come on. And you don't want nobody else because you have no confidence that you can believe that people have the best for you. Why? Because of a bad experience. I'm going to my text because we have to get to where Moses was. I'm describing Moses and his struggle. We're describing Moses and what he had to go through in dealing with the source of confidence. So for me, community is vital. It is absolutely important. And we got to take the word community is the biblical word. We also use the word fellowship. It means to be one with the spirit. That's what it means. Koinia, fellowship. If you read the Bible. So our issue is not about where the church can open or close. That's not even the argument. Don't get caught up in the argument. That's the devil saying, I'm going to keep them so distracted. That what we're talking about is we need community to hold us accountable. Because guess what? I want to stay with confidence. And so here was Moses now, and he got to the character of God. So in other words, how do you judge a community? Whether or not the character of God is on display. That's how you judge a community, is where the character of God is on display. Are they worshiping? Are they speaking more about Christ or more about themselves? That's what we're talking about. Who are they talking? When I leave, did I, hear, did I hear the gospel message? Believe it or not, there are some people who gather for corporate meetings and never hear the scriptures open. They never hear the message of Jesus. They're like, um, what did they teach you? I don't know. They told some great stories. I mean, there's people who are saying they went to another community and they said, first time we ever heard the gospel. How is that the case? It's because we have to recognize the source of confidence. And so that's the character of God. Okay, okay. The character of God already leads to this, created events. So the character of God doesn't lead to scheduled events. It leads to created events. The character of God, that's what it does. The second point is this. So now that I'm in community, now that I see the character of God, I can now be vulnerable. Ready for this? I can be vulnerable because confidence addresses, ready? Here's my second point. Confidence addresses the highs and lows of life. That I can come and be vulnerable and say, oh man, I'm struggling. I'm struggling right now. Um, Or I could come and say, man, I'm having an awesome day. God's working in my life. Things are victorious. And because I'm biblically balanced, come on, both of those, I acknowledge I need God. I need God in the valley, and I need God on the mountain. And so I can come with the highs and the lows of life. And this was Moses. And so he comes down. Moses in Exodus chapter 3 now. We see that Moses in Exodus chapter 3. If you get a moment to read it. Moses comes down. And Moses who Hebrew says was a good child. Hebrew writes about the fact that his parents hit him. Hebrew talks about he didn't fear the king. But here we see Moses now in Exodus chapter 3. He's taking care of sheep. Something happened to Moses. Moses went from the palace. Moses went from being a prominent position. Moses went to have an influence to now he's taking care of sheep. Not even his own. Moses at the mountain and Moses realized this. He says, when I look at the way I arrived and I looked at my adoption and I looked at my approach and my attitude, what have I accomplished in life? Moses looks back at his life and remember Moses he was the one that he saw the Egyptian beating upon the Hebrew and Moses now it came into his heart Moses comes down and Moses kills the Egyptian thinking that the people would recognize that this was a gift to them but no instead he comes back to those same two people in community let me not rush this Moses sees that that here's the Egyptian beating his own brother his own heritage Moses then goes and tries to fix that. That's his approach to life. He then comes back to the two people who are arguing. And he says to one in the wrong community, hold them accountable. He says, look, what you're doing is wrong. You are your brother's keeper. The one in the wrong brings up Moses' past. He says, who do you think you are? Come on. Who do you think? What confidence that you have to come and speak to me? Come on, look at that. And so Moses now runs because he recognized this thing was her. So Moses says, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm packing it in. The highs and the lows of life. And you're going to go through that. 
when it comes to this thing with confidence. There's going to be moments where you're going to look and you're going to see how did you approach that? Man, I could have approached it differently. And how was your attitude with that? I could have had a different attitude. And so because you have confidence and you believe the gift inside of me, you're going to sit down. We're going to have a conversation that's going to move to communication because I want to connect with you with confidence. So I'm going to sit down with you and I'm going to say, okay, now listen, how did you arrive at that conclusion? Come on. And what thoughts have you adopted? Oh, come on, somebody. Can I break this thing down for you? This is healthy community conversation. Why? Because the source of your confidence. So when you sit down with your children or you sit down with a coworker, ask them, how did you arrive at this? Was it a high or a low moment in your life? Because there could be stuff going on that you have to be sensitive and have compassion to. Come on. That when somebody's low, you don't want to keep stomping on them when they're already low. You want to be able to say, come on, how can I pick you up? How can I encourage you to see who you are? And if we don't have the wisdom of God, we must say, how did you arrive at this? And what mindset have you adopted? And what approach do you have to this situation? And what's your attitude? Because we want to see what do you want to accomplish? What is the goal? And so this speaks of your experiences. So confidence deals with the highs and the lows of life. And this changes daily it can change every hour you can walk in here in a high and i pray to god you don't walk out feeling low <laughs> that speaks to our community you shouldn't walk in here with this high i can't wait to get to church come on i can't wait to watch online and then when you leave you leave low that means somebody was in the flesh and messed with you and one of our vows is that people thrive in a safe place and so we got to make sure this place is safe, that people who come in on a high can even go higher. And they can say, oh, my God, I can believe all things with Christ. Come on. And that God's doing a great work in my life. And they can walk in and realize that, yes, keep believing God, that you're not crazy. You're not losing your mind. Keep trusting God because you got a community of people who believe in you. I don't know about you, but I like to go to a place where I'm celebrated and not tolerated. Come on. Come on, come on. we got to be the body of Christ. When we go to a place where we're celebrated, come on, and we're not just tolerated, and we can, come on, you can accomplish this. You can do that. We're not just trying to give you nice words. We're speaking to your destiny. There's good inside of you. Why? Because the character of God is in you. So that's the highs and the lows of life. Here's another one. Confidence. Ready? It works to fill your life. Confidence works to fill your life. So the highs and lows can leave you empty. It can. It can leave you empty. Uh, the highs and lows could be something that happened to you that you haven't shared with nobody. The highs and lows could be an addiction we just can't break. The highs and lows could be we believed in God at one time and no longer do we believe in God another time. The highs and lows, could you pray to God for something and it didn't happen and now you're in a low situation? Am I, am I talking to anybody? I'm talking to myself. That there are times where, I know we say you got to fake it to make it, but there are times where I'm just like, God, I'm just speaking it because that's what your word says. I don't feel it at all. At all. And so when I come to worship and I'm, and I'm jumping worship, and you don't recognize, I'm realizing God, by faith, you told me if I worship you. And I don't feel a thing, but you're telling me by faith if I continue to worship you that things are going to change. Come on. And I'm doing it by faith, and I don't see. And there's times my body is contrary to my thoughts. Come on. And the enemy's bringing stress on my life and, and bringing all sorts of things. And i got to be able to fight it. Why? Because I have to recognize that, that, that the struggle can leave me empty at times. And I'm not really nice when I'm driving on empty. I'm not really the best. My, my patience wear out when I'm empty. My joy depletes when I feel empty. And so confidence is the fuel that we need to continue, that we will always be filled up with life. See, when God breathed into you the breath of life, write this down, you didn't deplete life. When God breathed into you the breath of life, you didn't deplete the life that comes from God. So when God breathed life into you, thinking God like, has less life. So if God breathed life into you, what? You have life eternal. That's why at the end, you will live forever, whether in heaven with him or in hell with the devil and his angels. 
Because when God gives you life, he filled you up. That's a good, it was in my notes. That's just a good point right there. Praise God. Praise God. So God works to fill your life. And here's the final thing. I'm going to leave you with this. I'll leave my, my last point. Uh, but here it is. God works to fill your life. And so the people that you're going to encounter, maybe you're here today. The people you're going to encounter because of scheduled events in their life. Come on, praise you. You can come up. Because of scheduled events, not create events. Because of scheduled events that happen into your life, we confuse them with create events. Wednesday, I'm going to be teaching the young people. And we're going to have a time where we're going to have the parents come. We're going to have pizza. We're going to have a great time. Not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. And we just want to, Minister Blaine, Pastor Blaine is going to be speaking to the parents. And if you know teens or if you have a teen or your neighbor has a teen, we want you to come. Because I truly believe that we're in a season where this generation needs to know God. And we must be intentional about our investment in them. They need to have confidence. Too many young people are walking around without confidence. They can't make decisions if they're not confident. They can't. Who are they going to marry? they got to have confidence. they got to know. they got to have the confidence their parents backing them up and say, yeah, I'm with this. they got to have that. We see it in Hebrews 11 that Moses' parents recognized the good thing in this child. And, 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 so, and so what we have to do is to recognize that there's people you're going to come up against, and not in a sense of fighting, but people you're going to, 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 to that's going to be in, in your space. And the reason why God brought them into your life is because they're in a position of where they're saying, um, forget about the highs and lows. My life has just been empty for so long. Been empty for so long. And so what we must do is recognize the low and the lack of an empty person. The low points and the lack in someone's life. See, because you are filled with life and somebody's empty, your job, your responsibility, what you need to accomplish is to speak life to them. Speak life to them. You see, if you really believe, and those who are watching, that your life needs to have a flow because God wants you to go. He wants you to go to that person whose life is empty. And he wants you to recognize that you can can be a a conduit to to, to fill them. I love watching uh, the Air Force and documentary of it. I I love the one where they talked about when um, the war was going on and America had to build their F-16s and and the war we're losing, and just all the neat things about that. It was a great documentary, and and it was really neat, and all that stuff. And I was watching yesterday about how um, an aircraft that's on an assignment, and when it runs out of fuel, and it can't land anywhere, but it can't continue to run on empty. Some of you have been deployed by the kingdom of God, and you have a place you have to go. It's called destiny. And, and, And you're... And you're on this aircraft, and, and you're there, and, and you run out of fuel. And, and the, 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 the difference is either you make it to your course or you're going to crash. And I was watching this documentary where they would send a refueling aircraft. And, and it would go up, and it would stick this thing out. And what you had to do was you had to make sure the pilot had to make sure that he lines up with it, and he has to make sure he connects because this assignment is too important that I can't continue to live on empty. And, and, and he gets refueled because he connects with the fueling station. There are people who have been following their vision. Come on. And, and, and they're having their vision and they're running low. And God has said, I'm going to send you as the refueling station with faith. And they need to plug into confidence that you are extended to them. Because see, what happens is the confidence that I'm giving you, it works to fill your life so you can fill other people's lives. Write this down. You cannot live on empty. You cannot live on empty. And that's what God was saying to Moses. Moses, you can't live on empty. I know you had highs and lows, but Moses, you can't live on empty. There's a nation that needs to be delivered. There's a nation that needs your voice. There's a nation that needs what you have. And I'm here to encourage you, every single one of you that's looking me in the face right now. The reason why I'm preaching, especially about confidence, is because this nation needs your voice. This nation needs what you have to say. Your relationships need what you have to say. You must have confidence. We must have confidence because here is why. This is what it is. People are low self-image. They don't know who they are. They have low self-image and you can't make decisions. Come on, you can't make life-altering decisions by being low with low self-image. You can't do it. Some people have low self-esteem. 
You can't make decisions with low self-esteem. You will mess up destiny. So on one side, we have this low and the other part, we have this lack. And some people, they lack self-control. You can't make decisions by having lack of self-control. And you can't have lack of self-discipline when you're running on empty. And so these four things, these four things are what people need. And God is asking you, will you be my voice? Will you be the one to speak to that person and tell them that they were created in the image of God? Will you, will, will you fill them up and let them know that they're created in the image of God? Will you fill them up and tell them that, hey, their esteem, who they are, their thoughts is where God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know every hair that's on your head. I know everything about you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Can we be the voice to tell people, I know you're running on empty, but I can fill you up. Why? Because there is self-esteem. There is esteem that only comes from Christ. The lack of self-control and the lack of self-discipline. These four things is what the enemy uses as excuses to keep you from going in the flow. With every head bowed, every eyes closed. If you're running on empty, you are literally just tapped out. And I'm saying stay with confidence and pass the row I can identify with Moses. I've had some highs and I've had some lows. But Pastor, when if I was vulnerable, if I was honest, I would let you know I'm running on empty. I, I, I've been fighting this fight and I've been fighting in the flesh and I'm exhausted. And I'm empty. If that's you, I want you to know today that right now there is so much faith in this room Extend your hands like that aircraft had to extend its thing and connect to the refueling station of faith. Fish. I want you to see that in the spirit room. Those who are watching online, when your hand is extended and you're worshiping, what you're doing, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord wants to declare over your life right now that when your hand is raised in worship, what you would do is you're connecting to the resources of heaven. Tell me who I am. Tell me what you think about me. Because I lack. Because you said no good thing would you withhold from those who walk upright. And there's also another group of people that the enemy is bombarding your mind with your mind with excuses of why you cannot accomplish what God has for you. We're going to go after both of them this morning. We're going to go after both of them this morning. And so as we continue, as we sing, I want you to know right now that the first, the first thing we have to do is that if you're on empty, you have to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to let you know that you have been gifted by God to proclaim with confidence, speak straightforward, speak with boldness to people and say, Jesus can fill your life. Jesus can give you a new life. Jesus is the answer for every challenge and every situation. Jesus is the answer. Do we believe that body of Christ? Is there anybody who believes that Jesus Christ is the answer? Well, let's go ahead and just worship him and let's praise him and let's magnify him because Jesus is the answer and he's here to fill your life. I'm empty. I'm empty, Lord, but I'm here to be filled. Lord, I don't want to make any more excuses. I'm here. I want you to fill me. I want you to fill me. Yes, you're the God of miracles. All right. So here's the prayer. Don't miss it. Here's the prayer. Here's the prayer. I want you by faith to declare right now. You trust me on this one. So when I say, hey, repeat after me, like, well, what are you going to say first? We have to repeat it. <laughs> I 
I want you to declare this because I'm doing it as well. Right now. Right now, declare it. Declare these words. No more excuses. Come on. Come on, say no more excuses. I'm going to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Ooh, come on. Tell that devil no more excuses. Woo. No more excuses. No more excuses. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray over your people and over my life as well. No more excuses. Finance, no more excuses. No, no more excuses. No more excuses. COVID-19, no more excuses. No more excuses. Rachel, no more excuses, God. No more excuses. You have called me. You have saved me. You have delivered me. You are the God. Come on, of miracles. No more excuses. Come on. You can be all that God has called you to be in this season. He's working in your life to fill your life. He's working in your life to fill your life. No more excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. I invite you to my life. No more excuses. Mom and dad, you can speak to me. No more excuses. Come on. I'm running on empty, mom and dad. I'm running on empty. You see, the prodigal, the prodigal, the lost child came back. Why? He was running on empty. He had lost everything. He was running on empty, but he found a place he can go back to. Where the father stretched out his hands and says, come on to a place that's filled with love and filled with life and filled with abundance. Jesus, I pray for that lost child right now. In the name of Jesus, devil, shut your mouth. Come on, devil, shut your mouth. Come on, I will not listen to your excuses anymore. I will not listen. My child is coming back because there is life in your name. There is life in your purpose. They're confident, they're consistent, and they're coming home in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you, we bless you, we magnify you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Minister Vicky, come and get that mic and pray and launch us out of here in prayer. Hallelujah praise God. If you enjoyed the word and God spoke to you today, come on, clap your hands. Amen. Clap your hands online as well. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's working in your life. He's working in your life. Grab that mic. He's working in your life. He's working in your life. Heavenly Father, we just acknowledge that everything that has happened in this place is sealed to us right now in the name of Jesus, that Lord, all of your promises are yes and amen. We come into alignment with all that you have spoken over our lives, oh God. No matter what the enemy has said, no matter what our experiences are, we declare and decree that the enemy's mouth is shut right now in the name of Jesus. Every plan, every strategy that has come against us, we say it is over, it is done, it is completely broke apart, never to be put back together again in the name of Jesus. We speak into the heavenlies in the authority that you have given us, oh God, and we tell the enemy that we are a no-fly zone. We are a no-fly zone. Our children are a no-fly zone. Our grandchildren, this is a generational thing, God, that we declare in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, that you are moving, that you are doing it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what the media is saying, that we come into alignment with all that you are doing right now in the name of Jesus. And it is so. Your purpose and your plan, we step into it right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, that we are set on fire for the kingdom of God, for all that you are doing on the earth. We say yes, and it is so right now in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen.